Radio Namaste is brought to you by your host, the blue collar goddess, Sarah Nash, and a small crew of guest personalities determined to amuse, entertain, and occasionally astonish you. And now, Radio Namaste, a different brand of enlightenment streaming live across this galaxy and probably a few more. Just cracks me up. Hey, Namaste, lovers. It's your very own blue collar goddess, Sarah Nash, as your host. And you're listening to Radio Namaste on the Om Times Radio Network. Welcome to a very different brand of enlightenment. So hit me up on Twitter, okay? That's at Radio Namaste if you're listening in live on the most advanced mobile player on the planet. And don't forget that you don't have to download an app to get live streaming access to this conscious community called Om Times Radio. We host a lot of great shows. You're listening to one now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love patting myself on the back. Anyways, today's guest is a rock star in the realm where many are called and few are chosen, Acharya, aka DM Murdoch. She has devoted her entire life to revealing the solid truth behind religious rhetoric. And I know, I know this. I'm, I'm going to introduce her by reading Adam Parfrey's review of The Christ Conspiracy, The Greatest Story Ever Sold, one of her many books. But first, I wanted to point out that this was an historical week in the mailbox of Radio Namaste, because we didn't get a single recommendation for the Father Mulcahy Award or the Namaste Award. Ted, say something. He's rolling his eyes. <laughs> On the other hand, I have to tell you, there were over 27 Help Me Blue Collar Goddess questions. So I know the forms are working. I, you know, I, I went, I checked my spam filter. I checked the forms. I was just like, this is really strange. So what I'm sensing is that there are a lot of people out there. And I know that this is going to sound like, you know, I'm, I'm a... Uh, plugging uh yeah send me some money <laughs> so i think what i'm, I'm going to do is just offer y'all a, a discount on some sessions so set aside a couple of andrew jackson's send them to me via paypal and we'll go ahead and have a powwow your questions are interesting all right um but they aren't should i put an above ground or below ground pool on my property which is still one of my all-time favorite questions um I'm also available for consultations at Om Times Advisors. There's a, a, a link on my website at namaste.com too. And if you uh, go to IOM FM and you are listening to this live, you'll see links there as well. Um, right now, I am working on the annual online auction at the Labyrinth Society. We're going to go live with that this weekend. It's my volunteer gig. So my time has sort of been wrapped up in getting that off the ground. And um, speaking of ground, I don't, I don't want to waste any more time because I tend to run over anyway, and I'm anxious to get Acharya on the line. But here's that review by Adam Parfrey. I'm going to go ahead and put on my glasses. Putting on my glasses. It's live theater. Okay. For two millennia, a spurious tale has, been, has enslaved the human mind and spirit. It still does. Acharya S's The Christ Conspiracy may well be the most dangerous and important book of our time, for it reveals beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is not a historical figure, but simply a mythological toehold by which power mongers provide the dope of hope to the needy, malleable, and violent masses. That's Adam Parfrey. He's the author of Cult Rapture and the editor of um, Apocalypse Culture. I don't know. Acharya, hey. Well, hello there. How's the weather out there? Are you under six feet of snow? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm lying on a beach. Drinking my tie. Yeah, I want to. I want to lie on that beach and drink a mai tai. <laughs> it's virgin mai tai, though. I mean, you know, it's it's still it's not quite. Well, actually, it is noon. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Screw you're, the radio show. Let's go drink. <laughs> you're, you're, I'm ready for a vacation because all I do is engage in discussions with people who uh, become angry in 60 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did for years. You and I bonked heads because I, I, in one of my realities, and let's face it, no two people have the same reality, but um, I was a, uh, you know, I'm a recovering Catholic, a recovering Mormon. I'm recovering from religion, period. You know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of post traumatic stress disorders, and, you know, I was abducted by aliens and cults, and thank God I didn't drink the purple Kool Aid. But, anyways, um, <laughs> It no. must have been the red Kool-Aid. Yeah, what? It was the orange Kool-Aid. It was gross. Lime. <laughs> Ew. Oh, when, I like lime. When I first read your book, I was it. It made me angry. I I have mm -hmm. to tell you, I, and 
One of the reasons that I'm so delighted to have you on this show is because in spite of my insistence that I knew Christ in a past life and yada, yada, you just, you'd pat me on the head and say, you're adorable. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what I know about you, your ability to maintain your equanimity and to maintain some semblance of enlightenment when people are throwing stones at you, including yours truly here. Um, and, and try to prove you wrong again and again, and yet you still plug forward. I am not easily deterred. So well, how did you get involved in this, controvers this field, controversial field of research? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, there's people who have read Christ Count, which was my first book in 1999. That was when it was first published. I began reading, writing the book without actually knowing it. I Is wrote that what your essay. groupies call it? The Christ Con? A Christ Con. Christ yeah, I need to know this because I want to be a groupie. Okay, go ahead. I don't have groupies. You have groupies, blue collar goddess. But <laughs> <laughs> and let's not forget who gave you that name. By the I way. know. Let's <laughs> tell the world. Let's tell the world right now. People, the day that I met Acharya um, through a mutual friend of ours, Arhata, she gave Arhata his name too. <laughs> yes, he was in a boat by himself. <laughs> So I, I, I'm like, hi, how do you do? My name is Diva Nandana. Because I was <laughs> in that phase of my life where I was Diva Nandana. And she looks at me and she's like, no, you're not. You're more like the blue collar goddess. And you oh, just kind of. It, it, it was not meant in that. No, but that's how I it took it. It was a derogation. No, I, everything you said, I hated all the time. <laughs> it's, it's like, if, if your mouth was moving, I hated it. <laughs> It's like, <laughs> you know what, 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 why that popped out of my mouth, which, you know, in, in your worldview would come from the divine itself. <laughs> but the reason why, I, it, because you had this background in the real world that was, um, well, it was like kind of blue collar based on the, the individuals you were associated with at the I time. Was a, I was a hooker. <clears throat> Well, I have no idea about that. <laughs> I, <laughs> Cosmic Hooker, that came, I thought that was a later incarnation. But that I'm talking was. That specifically was. at the time, I'm not going to name names and get into personal details, but there, you, the life you had. Are you talking about were, my stupid ex-husband? Oh, no, I'm not going to go there. But let's just say <laughs> it was very kind of blue collarish. You know, I could envision a person wearing a wife beater with, you know, a can okay, of Okay, well, beer. now, wait a minute. I, you know, I know you don't watch much television, but right now the, <laughs> the, the reality series, uh, Survivor, they've got these three groups of people. They have white collar, blue collar, and the no collar. And, and so the blue collar uh, folks, right, they're winning, man. They, they're rocking this shit, so. Well, yeah, it wasn't a derogation of blue See, collar. I didn't say. know that because I was... The combination of that mundane reality with your cosmic reckonings was where the, the name came up. But anyway, so that was, that's how it came about. And now. it is, it is, it is ricocheted in my brain for years. And I'm so grateful to you. <laughs> I'm grateful to you for a lot of reasons, but there's one of them. So yeah. But I think, you know, I mean, the goddess aspect of it is certainly empowering, but in any event, and that's one of, you know, that it, it all comes back to this, uh, what's going on with religion and how it in fact derogated the goddess over generations and basically removed the female divine from our psyches and has uh, you know, reduced women to an impossible goal of virgin mother I and mean, that's our icon that's our arch archetype that we're supposed to focus on now but yeah and have this, children without sex yeah, or else you're worthless but uh, <laughs> the, the you know, so the, the ChristCon, the whole path I went on, it was also one of initial anger because when I discovered this information, I too was angry. I felt I had been defrauded and it was just like, well, what the heck are we? I didn't know this. Nobody's teaching this in our pulpits. Nobody's teaching it in our Sunday schools. They're not teaching the very specifics of Christian origins that I had discovered. What Nicene Council? What are you talking about? Yeah, well, that, that but that's even later. But I mean, to <laughs> it, the fact that there is no historical record whatsoever, contemporary historical record for this, this figure of Jesus Christ of, of the time, contemporary. And that was just the beginning where, uh, you know, when I, once I discovered that, I thought, well, how can you, how can you 
go around talking like this is some kind of concrete knowledge when, I mean, that was completely shocking to discover that this individual had never been recorded. I hated you. It was like, (laughs) why are you showing me this information? I don't believe it. I knew this man. All right. I had a personal relationship and not just like, you know, those born again Christians. I'm so filled with Christ-like love. Let me throw a stone at you. No, I had a personal relationship with this dude. I hated you. (laughs) Now you're lying to me. This is not true. Well, you'd have to just go and back and hate a whole pile of people who were involved in putting together this literature that analyzes Christian origins. Oh, no, but Acharya, people literature people want to shoot you they 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 want to shoot you as the messenger and this is why i admire and love and respect you so much because you (laughs) dude like you just plug on every single day every single time i talk to you you're always so grounded and centered and focused and you're like yeah and speaking again here grounded i maybe that's the the word for today grounded we're gonna have a break in about 30 seconds or something i don't the music is weird it like it comes in and it's like really super low and and then it gets really super loud and my people my listeners are like yeah we get that so keep talking (laughs) i want to know what your religious background is yeah, well, that would take a little more than the 20 seconds or so we have to break. I know, but we're everybody's going to be sitting with bated breath. Toe, like. toe in the water is that, uh, you know, I was born into a Protestant family, so Christian, and it, it goes back to the ninth century at least, at the latest, Christianity. So I, I know this, this ideology very well, and it's in my genetics dating back, well, over a thousand years. So, you know, I mean, I can deal with it. I can handle this. I, I like to say I've come to undo the, the karma of my missionary forebears. <laughs> when I was in Amsterdam a couple of years ago, I actually had a past life memory of being a missionary out there. But I hear the music, so we're going to stop right now and let them talk. your soul with waves of consciousness on ohm times radio circle of hearts radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves join me grandmother alaya in the circle on sunday 2 p.m eastern as i share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Do you like my music? Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, sure. <laughs> no, I know Zen Master Ted does. And my little <laughs> purple unicorn does too. But anyways, we, we were talking about what your religious background was and, yeah. and you were Protestant, which reminds me of Monty Python. We can use a condom yes. if we wish. Yes. But, <laughs> but, but we've, we've, ha- we've had two children and we've only had sex twice. <laughs> Bring me a strawberry. 
Every is sacred. Every, Every is is sacred. You know, not enough people are wearing hats. <laughs> but in fact, not enough people are actually watching the old Monty Python movies. And I am concerned that today they would not be made because there are too many religious fanatics running about saying, uh, shrieking blasphemy and sacrilege and phobia this and racism that. And we, we're, uh, we're under serious threat of losing not only our freedoms of expression, but also our sense of humor. And that really is a crime against humanity. It is a crime against humanity. And, you know, my my biggest my biggest thing that I, I used to, my, my quote of quotes was, uh, Christ came to earth to teach us about man's inhumanity against man. Now, I have since moved from the reality that I used to once hold dear, or the the thought, okay, remember, I, I always say faith is something you hold in your heart, and a belief is something that you hold in your head, and I always, always quote Don Miguel Ruiz when he said, you know, hey, listen, but be skeptical. I, I forgot to, to listen. I forgot the listening part. I was always skeptical. And if my, my goal is to reach out and share your message with the people who might not listen to you, but they will listen to me, and I'm going to drag them by their hands, gently flinging glitter, glitter along the way, glitter, glitter, love. Oh, I need to be the truth. glitter. <laughs> That's yeah. the thing. You keep forgetting. People, people don't get past that first initial, you're saying Jesus Christ never existed you know, infuriation. But Christ's consciousness it's, does. Well, that, you know, if you have to go there, that's, that's, uh, that's well, what yeah. you want to But I mean, that come on. In bed, that's up to you. But that's it's not. the frosting, honey. It's the frosting. Yeah, I don't think so. And not considering what's been happening in the name of Christ for the past 2,000 years, I really. I, I can't, terrific. I can't hitch my pony to that car. I know. But in any event, check it out. So when you get past that, first of all, the, the debate it, should not be framed, Jesus didn't exist. I, and I, it's fun to say that Jesus never existed, Jesus didn't exist. But, Jesus is a fictional character, but, he will never love you. Right, well, that's a different way of framing it. But <laughs> what what I like to say, rather than getting into the debate of whether or not you can prove a negative, blah, 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 I like to say a positive, which is Jesus is a mythical figure. So first we get into the analysis of whether or not there's any kind of supportive historical or archaeological record for this figure, and there is not, not anything credibly and uh, credible and scientific. Not at all. No, these other these other so-called testimonies are late, and when you when you scrutinize them, they're probably not even referring to Jesus of Nazareth at all. Nazareth never existed. Well. There's there's some skepticism as to whether or not it was a necropolis or if there was any kind of ha habitation of that area at the time. But it's my contention that uh -huh. it was called uh -huh. that to make him a Nazarene because that was a sect that was very important in the region and probably contributed to the composition of the gospel story. Well, so once you that start was the Essenes. The Essenes. Well, no, the Nazarenes actually. The Nazarenes were uh, part of a brotherhood, loosely knit brotherhood that was all around the, the Mediterranean, but the Nazarenes were one particular group. And they, oddly enough, their, their uh, figurehead god was a carpenter. So you can, this was a, this was a guild of carpenters. People are not quite The original aware of, Masons. Does Adam know this? That, that's another, that's another sect. But people see, people aren't quite aware that when, when you were involved in a guild, there was often a, a god, like a smith god, Hephaestus, and these uh, other uh, particular well, occupations. These people were not part of fraternities, but continue. <laughs> I mean, you know, you mean talking about like um, Animal House? Well, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so there were all these brotherhoods and fraternities and mystery schools and collegia and all this stuff going on all around the Middle East. I mean, of the Eastern Mediterranean in particular. Uh, but so when you get past that initial shock of saying that Jesus didn't exist, and 15 to, years, people. It took me 15 years, but go ahead. <laughs> go on. The, the payoff is that this is a mythical figure created in the in the same manner as all the older mythical figures in different cultures around the world, like uh, Zeus and Dionysus and Osiris. And, oh, those guys didn't exist. 
Exactly. That's the point. Those are <laughs> mythical figures. And this, this character was made in pretty much the exact same manner. It's called mythography. Or it's identical. Craft. It's nearly identical. Pretty much. Except at this point, remember that the Roman Empire had opened up like all like from Ireland to India, this massive territory. So all these different peoples were all kind of coalescing and bringing in their ideas. And so this effort became even larger than before. But this is how... When tribes merge, this is how their gods became embedded with each other. It was one of the other dom. If, the, if a tribe was dominant, its god became the dominant tribe, and then the gods of other cultures or tribes, gods and goddesses, were demoted. They too, there'd be like a patriarch or a saint or a demigod or a, a nymph or you know some kind of lesser being under the dominant tribe's god. It's like a cosmic popularity contest. Yes, but it's very mundane because it's human beings basically jockeying for position in the name of their gods, which they have created out of their, their, their own minds based on their observations of their natural world. And that's the payoff in this, knowing this, this is a mythical figure. Then we can say, well, where, where does this myth come from? We can back engineer it, look at all the individual elements of the story. In this, what we're talking about right now is the gospel story. So, you know, say, well, like, well, where's the virgin mother concept come from? What does it really mean? What about uh, dying and rising gods, uh, walking on water, all, the, all these elements that are easily detached from the story to begin with, which are all the supernatural, miraculous, magical moments. Uh, where do the, those motifs come from? What are they referred to? <clears throat> and when you start looking at all that stuff, it's absolutely fascinating. And not, and not only fascinating, but important as part of our shared collective heritage on planet Earth, this Earth, this one Earth that we live on, our ancestors were enthralled by being here. They were thrilled by nature. They were frightened by it. It, it had it played on their emotions in every which way. The sun rising in the morning, bringing warmth and light to relieve the terrors of the night was greeted with tremendous joy and this would be like every day you wake up well, like, you saw the crudes oh, right what media let's talk about the crudes for a second did you see that the the disney movie i think it's disney zen master ted is a disney crudes i don't know there's an a wonderful animated movie out there called the crudes c-r-o-o-d-s it's a disney or pixar film or pixar's disney is anyway it's a fabulous fabulous children's movie based on cavemen um becoming enlightened literally it's hysterical and beautiful and uh you know every morning it's like i'm going to call this tomorrow and it's it's da, da, da. people who are listening who understand know but no, Acharya, one of the points that I, I want to really, I want to, to bring home here, because we're going to, God, my God, break in five minutes, Jesus. Literally, Jesus, Jesus. Um, the, one of the things that I wanted to point out is that you have to remember, darling, your brilliance, all right? You, it, what was, we discussed this yesterday briefly. It was like, you have to remember that you represent seven one percent of of the intelligence of humanity on the planet today okay percent uh, well the, okay all, all right then fine see you know and it, the, you, you're so far removed from what say the blue collar person <laughs> such as me i'm i'm bridge i'm bridging the world here people i'm i'm the bridge that's going to lead you to the truth which is you know that's acharya is holding the scroll there but you know follow acharya and this is the way glitter people glitter the, You're the, the thing, bifrost <laughs> asgard i think one of the dilemmas that we're facing and why it's so important that we have these radio shows and that people such as yourself actually deal and and actually can communicate with people like me is is that you know, you you live in this scholarly world where people such as myself or or you know even lesser individuals are like, what do you mean Jesus didn't exist? I have to throw a stone at you. I mean because their brains are numb. Their brains yeah, are numb. But, you know, I was a born again Christian too, so I I can relate to where they're coming from. And in fact, it was while I was doing that that strange, weird cultic born againism that I basically I asked Jesus to tell me the truth, show me the truth. And then oddly enough, within a period of time, a skeptical book essentially fell off the shelf at me called Forgery in Christianity. And that was 
that was where I was, I, that, the anger that you feel, I recognized that because when I started reading this book, I wasn't angry at the author, though. No. I was like, I but was see, like, people are angry goodness, with you. this guy took the time to do Boom, this. right there. I'm going to stop you right there. You I, were not angry with the author, okay? Yeah. You were not angry with the author because you present, you represent 0.1% of the human <laughs> population, all right? Now right, I'll accept that. I'll accept it. That sounds and good. and so what we've what we're dealing with here. I mean, I'm pretty fucking smart. Okay, I can. That's a high vibration fuck, by the way, people. But <laughs> I, I, I'm you know I'm pretty smart. I, I don't have a PhD, but you know, I, I, the bottom line is that I can definitely tell white from black and red from green. Um and people please. That's a metaphor. Jeez Louise, some of these messages. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is here is that you don't get angry with the author all right I'm, I'm going to bring this back to a little bit of a personal level we've got a break in one minute geez um, people do get angry with you Acharya oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I did I'm a thick skin I, yes you do and what I want to know is I, I want in you know when we come back from this break You've had personal relationships with various gods and goddesses. I remember one time you were at a party at Jess Dern's house in Malibu and you called yourself the Buddha. <laughs> I remember that. That's good. That's good. That was the, I, there's some funny stories with that kind of behavior. And you've also said that you've had several personal relationships with Jesus. Oh, uh, yeah. I can, I can, you know, I can do the talk. I can get down on that. Right? Well, so, yeah, I was born again and I, I, you know, did the whole thing where you... Pray. I mean, I was I was raised a Christian, so it didn't take that much. You were raised a Protestant. I protested. I protest. I still. You do. know, a lot of people think that Christians, like, are are Mormons Christians? Are 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 you know are Protestants Christians? What is yeah. a Christian? Well, anybody who thinks Jesus Christ is a supernatural being. Okay. Real, yeah. yeah. Makes you Christian. All right. <laughs> namaste bitches hey listen i think we're gonna hear some music in just a second we'll be right back be nash must oh <laughs> of Conscious Radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The Conscious Parenting Radio Show provides inspiration and resources for loving, empowering, and respecting your children and yourself. Join me, Timothy, every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time as we consciously explore proven ways of living together in happiness, health, and harmony. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Katrina Kavanagh, host of the I Am Wisdom radio show. I Am Wisdom is about the connection between mind work and energy work, spirituality and living a wonderful life. Looking forward to sharing each Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with you. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. I Om FM. I just realized I had my microphone on mute. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. You can hear me, right? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> it's live radio, folks. You know, this this uh, platform stretches all across the globe. We have more listeners um, globally. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> we have more listeners on the outside of the United States than we do on the inside of the United States. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. I just got a message from some guy who said that professors in, in okay, well, he spelled it X-I-A-N, that's Z-I-A-N. Christian schools aren't smart, hashtag question mark. <laughs> I, I was just, well, it had a lot to do with I was speaking about the intelligence of certain people. So, I mean, you are a formidable um, uh, presence out there. You're a force of nature, Acharya. And, <laughs> and you know, there, there are people out there who fear you. Why do you think that even vastly intelligent people are frightened? <laughs> I'm, I'm very scary, boo. Well, <laughs> you know, knowledge is power. The, the one thing that I have that, that I did come with here on this planet is an ability to work in languages. So I can draw from ancient texts and go right to the sources myself without someone, without a priestly mediator interpreting well, remember, that for me. A know, priestly you, or academic. Yes. You speak seven languages. Well, it isn't, isn't what I speak, but I've been, I've taken in school different languages to that, you know, probably that number. But then since I developed the skills of being able to work in languages, I can work in, I worked in 20 in the last book I, my Moses book did Moses exist the myth of the Israelite law oh god now you're taking down Moses too oh yeah though no, that book's got being some sarcastic. pretty good attention actually yeah um, but it's the same it's the same thing when you get past that initial shock that there that this is not of historical character wait a minute a okay so figure. you took out Jesus now you're taking out <laughs> Moses that means we don't have the Ten Commandments so oh, thank God. What's, what's going yes. on Acharya oh, what are you doing to us <laughs> all our rules and regulations are going those away are, you know those are all punishable by death so I don't think that's such a bad thing to get rid of that rot but well you everything know, is punishable by all the food is poison. <laughs> everything just we're all living is punishable by death <laughs> 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 That's a tweet. Tweet that. Tweet that, Zen Master Ted. <laughs> Living is punishable by death, and and hashtag Acharya's name in that because she deserves that. <laughs> Living is punishable by death, <laughs> especially if you live well. I, you, know, you have to live terribly, like misery, miserable, and suffering. And no, I want to be happy. Don't you want to be? I'm so tired of not being happy. I really yes. want to be happy. You know what? I would be happy if people would look at where this stuff comes from so that we can all appreciate our natural world in particular. That's well, Jesus Christ, our Savior, said, let those who have <laughs> eyes see and those who have ears hear. But, you know, it's like selective hearing and <laughs> people with blinders. What are you going to do? I mean, you're... One of the, again, people, one of the things that I admire so much about this woman is I have known her for over 15 years. She is steady as a rock. Mm. I admire that. You do not flip-flop. You do not. You're not wishy-washy in any way, shape, or form. In fact, you just get angrier and more beautiful. People, <laughs> she used to be a supermodel, by the way, or not, not, not a supermodel. Super model, but well, yeah. you were, to me, you're super, but hey. <laughs> I'm just a group. You know, I had too much personality. I was, in fact, I Me was, too. See, we were talking about that yesterday. We were both models. Yeah, uh, Acharya, personal. you were a runway model. I was too because. Well, and not, not only exactly. No, actually, I just did the run of the mill stuff and catalogs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the yeah, I, I couldn't, I couldn't pull that off because I had too much personality. But yeah. So you know, so in any event, it didn't suit my intellect, obviously. But no. It, and it, yeah. it hasn't even really helped much with uh, my work because it uh, doesn't seem to impress theologians and seminaries. Well, you have a vagina. See, vagina, they, vagina, vagina. That is a big problem. Yes, it is. It's suspicious immediately. You know. Oh, absolutely. It must be misinterpreting. for seven days and doesn't die. Must be, you know, <laughs> well, it must awful. be misinterpreting things because my brain is in a female body and therefore it can't be accurate. That's but Seriously, that is the block the wall that I come up against repeatedly. However, my diligence and my inability to be moved from this position have allowed me to at least break down that barrier to some extent. I'm like the I'm the woman in the locker room in this subject. There's no doubt about that. And uh, and I'm not just like in the locker room. I'm throwing my weight around in the locker room. <laughs> and I'm saying, get her out. She doesn't saying, have you know, balls. No matter, 
how many times you try to personally insult me into your cultic views, I am not vulnerable because I have over here a text in ancient Canaanite that I can draw from to prove my point. And so it's not a question of how many insults we can throw at each other to prove our point. It's a question of what does this ancient text say, and here it's quite clear. And in my Moses book, I really get into these different texts from antiquity, and I show – I like to think that I'm able to draw out the most fascinating information for people, and in other words, the, get rid of the dross and you know, bring, bring out the gold. And the gold, again, in these stories, the Moses myth and the Jesus myth, basically much of these stories revolves around the sun, the golden sun, S-U-N, in the sky, our serious Lord and Savior, so to speak, the one that keeps life going on this planet, the one that greets us through after the cold winter and has been the source of countless uh, rituals and myths and traditions around the globe. This is, this is the, shining, uh, the shining lining, the, the shiny lining to the clouds of, uh, of Jesus mythicism, where we're breaking down this fallacious premise of a historical superhuman uh, Jewish Messiah and revealing this lining that is a core mythos that really unifies humanity beyond all these divisive cults with their figureheads, their cult leaders saying, uh, unless you, if you're going to follow me, you have to hate your parents. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or go sacrifice your sons. Yes. I mean, all that crazy, weird, wacky, cultic stuff. Uh, when, but, when we don't okay, you're calling it crazy and weird and wacky, and yet for millions <laughs> and millions of people, this is their, 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 mm -hmm. uh, their card, their calling card to go destroy each other. And now, that's Dr. Dr. Bolin just pointed out, she said something in God's and Every Man. I just want to read this because it goes straight. I love Dr. Bolin. Uh, Jean Shinoda Bolin, I got to get her on my show, but the world as we know it is a place where men are shaped by patriarchy to be lonely heroes. Men are expected to leave their mothers and renounce any sameness with them. Fathers are distant and withholding of themselves. Men compete with other men, deny vulnerability, reject what is, un what is unaccepted, repeatedly separate from less able companions, and go on. Yeah. Repeatedly separate, sorry, separate from less able companions and go on. And and Dr. Bolin right now is is she's got this um, the indomitable spirit in every woman, she's she's she, the Artemis in every woman, and she's really championing this this uh, this coming out of the divine feminine. And this time we're not burning our bras. We love our tits, and we're going to cover them. <laughs> you know, You're gonna cover like, them. and and well, not only that, we understand that we're not going to use underwire bras anymore because that can cause breast cancer. That's my public service announcement. But you know, we're proud of our boobies, and okay. in. And America is this uh, this place that is uh, July, okay, July, cancer. America's cancer, the sign of cancer, and they're all about boobs. And uh, we, one of the reasons that I left the LDS church, the Mormon church, was because I wanted to become a Melchizedek priest. I had wanted to become a Melchizedek priest since I was 12 years old. And Joseph Smith ordained Emma Smith as a Melchizedek priest. Brigham Young came along and had his 90 wives or whatever it is. And I love you Mormons, please. I, I, you know, I graduated from a four-year seminary. But the bottom line is they're wrong. And everybody's wrong. And we're all wrong. We're wrong. <laughs> everybody's wrong. And, you know, for everything that you say, Acharya, there's... Tw there's there's 12 professors out there from uh, again like this guy who said um, that professors in, in Christian schools aren't smart I'm like well y that's not what I'm saying dude I'm only responsible for what I well, say not for what you hear look they're they're not smart in the sense that they haven't ventured outside of the box to look into this material that I like to talk about as the massive body of Jesus mythicist literature where did uh, you find all this stuff you know once I found that book Forgery and Christianity by Joseph Wheelis it sort of opened up the door to the books that he was influenced by and then from there it just you just so then you became a gateway drug too <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> to, to the sunshiny happiness yay no Listen, are you kidding you're my life living mother. hell <laughs> <laughs> no 
not really comprehend it. Let me give you an example. Okay, so if we know that the Virgin Mother is a pre-Christian mythical motif, what does it represent? This is just one example. Absolutely fascinating if you go back and you look into it. There are an, a number of different mo m meanings for this motif, and one of them would be the parthenogenetic creation of the cosmos. Parthenogenesis is Greek for virgin genesis, virgin Thank you. I was just going to say, you're going to have to dumb that down. <clears throat> yeah. But if you look at this word parthenogenesis and you find out, well, there's a whole scholarly academic genre and field. It's not so shocking to people. They don't get angry. They're like, oh, virgin mother motif. Oh, I see. Here it is. It's in the Canaanite religion. It's in the, it's in the uh, Mithraic religion. It's in the Dionysus myth. It's in the Attis myth. It's in um, the myth of Horus and Isis. And, and before everybody starts freaking out, I have all of the documentation for those claims from antiquity in primary sources. The people who are saying nay, nay, nay to all of this uh, material about virgin mothers and these different gods are not experts. They have not looked at this information. They are scanning encyclopedias and they're just pretending that they know something. They're going to apologist websites. They do not know what they're talking about. They haven't looked at the primary sources. And so once we can get beyond that and accept that this is a pre-Christian motif, we can say, well, what does it mean? Parthenogenic, genetic uh, creation of the cosmos. And uh, on a more mundane level, the, the Virgin Mother was a dawn goddess who gave birth to the sun, mm -hmm. renewed and refreshed every morning. And if you actually go out and watch a sunrise with the, the rosy finger dawn, as Homer put it, uh, you can see where this concept would come from. And it was glorious and beautiful and wonderful and not ethnically biased as being as it is depicted in the, in the no gospel. the sun the sun belongs to everyone yeah the sun and it belongs to everyone it brings awe to us in those circumstances who isn't odd if you go out camping you're camping at the beach and you see a sunrise it's mind-blowing well you know what else is mind-blowing is that we're at 12 I think <laughs> 45 minutes so we'll be right back yeah Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Know what to do, just can't figure out how to fit it all into your busy life? It doesn't have to be that way. Hi, I'm Ellen Baysford from Seamless Life. Join me every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on Home Times Radio and learn the how of conscious living. Let me and my guests help make your life seamless. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. I can't believe that we're like nearing the end of this. It's like, no, I'm having too much fun. I hope our listeners are having fun. No, it's torture. <laughs> no, 
Are you kidding? Revealing <laughs> the truth is torturous. It was like pulling a, a Band-Aid off a gaping wound. I'm like, no, I don't want to see this. Oh, God, she was right. Ugh. You know, for me, it started with uh, Nazareth. It really did. When I, I began researching, um, well, we, we discussed that last summer, but that dude's book about Nazareth, and, and I started looking at the the some dude, some guy out in Nazareth. They have like a little town there because Constantine was like, hey, we need to build something there. Um, <laughs> they actually found this old Roman like shower or something, right? In the- oh, I don't know. I'm not an expert on the archaeology of Nazareth, but I can tell you that in the Greek texts, it's more likely that he was made a Nazarene, and they just said, well, there's a place called that. So they're trying to make him seem like he's coming from a place when, in fact, he's part. Of, he's supposed to be the mythical figurehead of a particular sect. So, but well, we already discussed that. Yeah, we did. But I, I just, you know, I, I'm. This is about me. It's not about you. God, shut <laughs> up. Really? I, I, mean, I, I, I sent this out to all my followers. I thought they were uh, part of the program. No, you are amazing. And listen, <laughs> if you can change, if you can direct me, okay, I changed my own mind because I opened my eyes. You know, listen, people, your Lord and Savior said, open your eyes and have ears to hear. Um, your Lord and Savior is out there. He's everywhere. She's everywhere. <laughs> and and um, namaste. Let's let's talk about that because, real real right. quickly because that me, was about languages and things. Anybody who wants to get in my information, go to truthbeknown.com. It's all one word, truthbeknown.com, and stellarhousepublishing.com again, all squished together. Stellarhousepublishing.com, freethoughtnation.com, and astrotheology.com. Astrotheology is what we discover is the basis of a lot of our religion dating back many thousands of years. And it is basically nature worship, astral mythology, solar mythology, astral religion, and whatever you want to call it. Okay, so that's where you can find my information. Now, the forum at Free Thought Nation, that's where you have your forum, right? I do. Okay. Um, I'm very fond of that, by the way. Oh. I get a lot of information off Free Thought Nation. I have one of your t-shirts, too. Smart. Where can people buy your stuff? Well, they can get my books at stellarhousepublishing.com. Okay. But, and, you know, they're all over these other sites, too. But that's really good to know that you're availing yourself of the forum because we have thousands of posts on there, not just from me. I wish I were that busy, but I'm, <laughs> I'm already exhausted by what, by what I do. But, um, so, yeah, anyway, so this analysis of you were telling me that your radio namaste because you have the H in there. People get all freaked out by. It. So we, we were discussing. Do you that. know that you spelled namaste wrong? Well, the first thing <laughs> you need to respond is that it's a transliteration from Hindi, so it's not you know it's a, tra- a different transliteration than the normal. So that's not necessarily a wrong spelling. And then the other thing is, if you go and you look up this word namaste, it's it's a combination of namaha and uh, te, which means you. And namaha means to bow, to be, uh, to, to salute reverentially, to adore. And so namaha is the original word, and it has an H in it. So you can kind of get away with what you've done. <laughs> and, you know, I have to tell you, again, you've disappointed me with your truth. Why do you always do this? I thought Why it was that a disappointment. I thought it was unique and original, and I thought it was funny because it was like I honor the lunatic in you as you honor the lunatic in me, or not. Oh, but all right, well, it, it was fine. it was so revealing, and then you actually sent me the the Sanskrit for Nahamas. Na, how do you say that? Namaha. 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 Mahaha. It Namaha. was like when when Doctor Michel Gudry. Dr. Goodry, he said, no, we don't say Himalayan, we say Himalayan. It's, okay. it's the Himalayan mountains, not Himalayan. We always know that you're, you're a newbie when you say Himal- when you're going to Himalaya. It's Himalaya. So, I, no, okay, I'm just going to have to write this down. Here we go. I'm, All right, now one listen. more time. Listen, that's astrotheology.net. Astrotheology.net. Astro, ast- astrotheology.net. Astro. There's some really interesting information about our ancient past. That's what it's all about. And, and you know, it's, I encourage people um, to go look. It's, 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 
not going to destroy your spirit. It will encourage and sustain your spirit to go look and to read. Form your own opinion, people. Don't. You know, there's an article there about the about the the myth of Jonah and the whale, and it, suddenly it'll make sense to you and fits in with the, a bigger worldview than this bizarre tale of. You know, I think what it is, and, and I'm just going to bring this back to a place of reckoning for, with regards to the the paranormal, the metaphysical, the supernatural, it's like, it's perfectly okay for people to say that they have seen an angel or that an angel came and spoke to them because, okay, that's cool. But if you say that you've channeled something from an alternate dimension, or okay, suddenly that becomes not acceptable. What we are championing, what I want to do is make it acceptable to seek the truth because people have this fear within them, Acharya, that you and I have moved through already. We hold the flame and the fire of truth within us. And now I, I'm you know, getting on my pulpit a little bit, but what I honor about you is that you are unafraid. You are unafraid, and and frankly, I, I'm terrified. I have been burned, eviscerated, drowned, you know, uh, in, in so many past lives, whether or not that even exists, I feel as though it does. So I'm validated by my emotional truth. And I honor you so much because you maintain the, the, the challenge of revealing the truth. You are a prophet, my dear. You, <laughs> no. I, I'm I'm telling the world know, you it's are a, a prophet. It's iron, ironic for you to say something like it that. It is so ironic, but you know the dichotomy in there. Well, if it's a, if it's a paradox, it must be true. In you know to bring it into the modern day, visionary is not a bad term. And just let's say I see things differently. And if if I'm if somebody else wants to see what I'm seeing, that's up to them. So there's no compulsion here. You don't have to listen to this. You don't have to read my stuff, but if you are interested in what I am seeing, but and you, what I what I tend to see is much broader and bigger than uh, what other people are seeing. So there's no reason not to take a look. I'm talking globally what humanity has devised religiously and mythologically dating back tens of thousands of years, and applying to numerous cultural cultures around the world. So while some people who are of a particular mindset might get angry, there are many other culture people in other cultures have come to me and said, you know, thank you so much for talking about our old ways, our pre-Abrahamic religion, culture, mythology, uh, language, everything that has been overcome by this foreign invader mentality and ideology. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Native Americans, Alaskan Natives. Oh my God! I, I have I have a, a friend who's an Alaskan Native, and what Christianity did to them was just—it's uh, unbelievable. And so I have ha tried to encourage. And that's that's modern times, people. This is yeah, that's modern only within times. the last you know hundred years or so, and that and that and that's why the the Alaskan story is even more appropriate. For one thing, you don't hear all kinds of horrible tales about Alaskans scalping people or doing having wars or. So this is a really never kind speak of, of the Comanches again. <laughs> Comanches, right? This is a really kind of peaceful, very uh, communal group of people who had lived for thousands of years on their own, and they just, within my lifetime, have had their culture turned on its. Year. And now they, they might they might enjoy the, the technology that comes with their integration. What are you working on now? I, I don't mean to cut you off because but, it's actually I've got like two minutes and I, I need yeah. to introduce next week's right. guest. But what are you working on right now? What, well, what, what's your next project or, or right now I'm reviewing I'm reviewing a, a book on Moses by one of my colleagues. Robert Price, and it's got some similar information as my book on Moses, and great great minds think alike. So, <laughs> when are we, you going to publish a memoir just about you? And I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like people want to know about what you really. I mean, this this Native American thing. I I didn't know this about you, and uh, you and I talk often. I know that you're, you know, very very concerned about the Islamic. Um, uh, yeah, that's all that too. Yeah. Well, and listen, we could keep talking forever. Yeah. I got like two minutes left and I got to talk about Sayward. But no problem, hon. I would love to have you now. back. I would love to have you back. Will yeah. you come back? Of course. Can we, can we wrap again? That would be so awesome. We could awesome. talk for 10 years. Probably. Good Lord. Maybe we should do like a television show or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks. I appreciate All right, take care. You, you rock. I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. 
<laughs> Thank you for opening my eyes, leading me to the truth. You and gratitude it. to our sponsor, Alchemy Stones, from alchemystone.com. Hey, how's that done? <laughs> Zen Master Ted. Woo, that was like so professional. We have a really wonderful selection of incredible art at Alchemy Stones. Um, and we give them to the recipients of the Namaste Award. And now we know a little bit more about Namaste. So if you're looking for a really great gift for Mother's Day... Um, or something to put in your Easter basket if you, you know, because I love ritual and tradition. You know, I think some of us are afraid to give up our truth because we like to hold on to ritual and tradition. You know, you can still celebrate whatever it is that you want to celebrate just for the, you know, it's like watching the sun come up in the morning. Yay! So, you know, um, by the way, if you, you can get free shipping in the continental U.S. for your alchemy stone. And um, overseas, our listeners are going to get a 15% discount. Um, next week's blah, 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 words, Say Word Air. She's going to be our featured guest on next week's show. Um, she had three separate close encounters with beings that appeared to be aliens. And I've met Sayward. Um, in fact, she's going to be hanging out this weekend for a, a crop circle thing that the local MUFON, um, that's the um, Mutual UFO Network uh, coordinator out here she's having a, a what a conference a gathering something with regard to crop circles and sayward air is actually coming so i'm going to get to hang out with her again this weekend and we're going to talk about next week's show um she with her close encounters with these with these aliens um she actually what she found was really exciting and disturbing and, and really terrifying and again like Acharya, Sayward has uh, credentials, right? She's a she's she's an archaeologist. Hey, thanks for joining us. This is a great show. I can't believe it's been an hour. See you next week. Lifestyle on steroids.